How are we going to manage through this crisis and beyond? Emotions, scenarios and models are my three themes today. Last week I talked about emotions and their role in our leadership. Emotions are powerful movers of people and organisations. We need to be in touch with our own emotional response to what is happening and be great sensors of the emotional field around us. The soulful practices we've been looking at help us to detach from the moment, to step back and consider ourselves and the role we play in different settings. And one of the difficulties in navigating the current crisis and beyond is that nobody really knows what is going to happen. And in a sense, we're trying to make decisions based on what we think other agents might do. A way of dealing with this is to set up different scenarios and explore them. For each scenario, we imagine the extreme poles of possibility. For example, the end of physical meetings, or B, on the other hand, the renewal of physical meetings, A or B. A assumes that people become so used to online working that they're able to achieve amazing things, and maybe that anxiety about ongoing contagion risk keeps people physically apart as much as possible. Or B, the renewal of physical meetings, that people have become so fed up with trying to connect by screen that they'll be longing to get together again as much as possible. People see contagion risk as low and they've realised how much is missing from the 2D 15-inch experience. A and B, two extremes. Where on the two poles will the future lie? There are so many scenarios we could explore that we're already developing. But the virus has accelerated the rate of change. Last week I offered a few ideas and you all suggested others. And I'd like to explore seven of these ideas together. And finally, what models help us to think about the scenarios from different angles? To explore scenarios, we need to step back from our purely emotional reaction and find different ways to see things. Some models i found really helpful include looking at psychological profiles to understand human behaviour, systems thinking, including looking at chaos, and adaptive systems is also a help. For today I want to explore a bit Dr Simon P Walker's work on human ecology and the undefended leader. This looks at the formation of individuals and organisations from the perspective of a metaphor, front, and backstage. The dynamics of strong and weak power can be applied to the different stages and the dimension of expanding or consolidating. More of that later. So, emotions, scenarios, models, that's the roadmap for this morning. Is that worth investing a little time in? So, emotions. My encouragement is to deep observation and noticing what is happening and not being afraid to observe the emotional field around us. That's our own reaction, as well as our observation of others. The viral crisis created a wave of global change. Certain things have happened that few of us could have predicted, although Bill Gates did a pretty good job in his TED talk of 2015. If you've not seen it, it was pretty prophetic. I want to summarise a few things I've noticed and wonder about and describe how I felt. In mid-March, in the early stages of the crisis, I felt very low. Everything I was expecting, I had built up, was planning for, just started to melt away. I felt completely out of control. Things that I thought could never happen here in the UK just happened. And as an asthma sufferer, I wondered if I was one of the vulnerable ones who should be locked up for three months and shielded. I remember the drama of my mother-in-law having the removal company pack up her house in Warrington so she could move to London so we could look after her. And then the removal company refusing to deliver because going to London was too risky. That was dramatic. My emotional reactions were also driven by a new addiction. I was checking the news feeds every half an hour or so, or even every five or ten minutes. It wasn't healthy. 
So what has happened in the world and how do you feel about it? What emotions do you observe in yourself, in your family, your organisations? And as I mentioned a few factors, uh, I've thought about seven significant themes. How do you feel about them? Here they are. Return of the expert and the interest in science and statistics. The reading of the daily death rate, R, the rate of transmission, virus testing, antibody discussion, aerosol spread or droplets, mask needed or optional, one metre, one and a half metre, four metres. Everyone's discussing the facts, the science, but for all the work globally, so little is known for sure. Leading scientists and doctors have stepped in to the national stage, but also conspiracy theories and misinformation. Just trust the science. How do you feel about this? What about fear, duty on a national scale? Significant fear, anxiety for personal safety and family safety combined with a new national duty focused on protect the NHS. With almost religious intensity down to the weekly National Thursday thank offering as we clap our NHS heroes. How do you feel about that? And then there's the economic chaos across industry after industry, devastation for many businesses with state financial intervention on a massive scale, with almost reckless abandon, with continued special pleading for more and more subsidy. When does the money run out? Huge impacts on global markets with massive volatility and uncertainty. Anyone fancy a cruise at the moment or a long-haul air journey? Charity is especially hard hit. Although for those still in work, disposable income has never been higher. There's nothing to spend it on. How do you feel about this? And then the state intervention at an unimagined level. The new state control over our private lives is remarkable and has public support. Banning public worship, forbidding family members to meet up, closing down sport. Who would have thought that even the Premier League would grind to a halt? How do you feel about this? And then digital humans, as people have moved to work from home, we've all become even more inseparable from our devices. News, social media and information flow. Amazing, creative things are happening now online and even digital laggards are developing fast. The joy my 82-year-old mother face on her face when she by accident launched a group video call bringing together her eight-year-old grandson in the US and her two adult grandchildren in London. Amazing. But I'm still resisting the urge to join TikTok. How do you feel about digital? And then institutional agility. When things needed to happen fast, things really did move. How amazing. The Nightingale Hospital built in nine weeks. Thousands of bankers in Canary Wharf walked out of their buildings one day, carried on at home the next, and the financial system continued. Schools creating digital offerings from nothing and new designs of ventilators being specified and commissioned and built in weeks. Amazing. And thousands of rough sleepers within one week were all found places in hotels. Remarkable agility when it was needed. How do you feel about this? And finally, the exposure of inequality. COVID-19 is a great leveller. From the prince in his palace to the pauper at the gate, everyone can be exposed to the infection. But the experience and outcomes of lockdown and of infection are very, very different. Low pay in the care home sector or supply chain, where people are risking their lives, has become better known. How do you feel about this?